Hey, I'm Danny, and because so many of you subscribed last time, I'm just gonna jump right into this video. See, good things happen if you subscribe. Why don't you try it? Engaging the hips is something that a lot of people like to talk about like it's this secret source of a ton of power. And it does add a good bit of power, but it's not just as simple as spinning your hips as fast as you can at the right time. Now, I won't re-explain everything I did in the last video, but basically, it's having something to leverage against or for your rotation to push against is a lot more important than just how fast you're rotating. Jason, or Loop Ghost, or Heavy Disc, describes it like if, if rather than throwing a lightweight disc, a relatively light disc, I was using something really heavy, like I was using a battering ram. I wouldn't swing the battering ram back and then just spin my hips as fast as possible, because I would probably just leave the battering ram behind, my arm wouldn't be in a good spot, I would be really off balance and I wouldn't be able to swing the battering ram very effectively. But what I would do is I would try to stay balanced and I would shift my weight first and then swing the battering ram forward and I would be like braced up against it. So thinking about it like that, like you're having to really leverage yourself to be able to move this thing, even though it's really light, is really helpful. I basically kind of re-explained it even though I said I wouldn't, but eh. As I understand it, there are three keys to engaging your hips properly. They are speed, balance, and range of motion. Speed is pretty self-explanatory. If you're moving too fast, you're not gonna be able to stay balanced and do everything that you need to do to be able to throw the disc well. It's kind of helpful if you think about it like a timeline. If you spread everything out by moving really slowly, you have a lot more time to do everything that you, you have to do. But if you squish it together by moving really, really fast, then there's a lot less time to do everything, and so it ends up being a lot more easy to mess up. That was a sentence in English, I'm pretty sure. The second is balance. Now, I don't think anybody does this intentionally, but it's incredibly common for people to end up leaned way away from the target. Now, part of this can happen because you're moving too fast. A lot of times, your feet will just kind of get ahead of your body and that'll tilt you away from the target. Or sometimes taking too big of a next step. If you take a step and then your next step is really big, that tends to lean you backwards. Or, like I struggled with for years and kind of still do, is jumping while I X-step. There is a way to do this properly that I'll talk about later on, but I would argue 99% of people who jump while they X-step are just doing it because they're moving too fast, and what usually ends up happening is a little bit of a tilt, and you end up <laughs> leaning away from the target. The other way that people end up off balance is reaching too far back. Now, it would seem intuitive that the farther you reach back, the more power you'll have, but it doesn't always work like that. Now, the reason that leaning towards or away from the target is bad is because it offsets all of your weight. Your torso is a good portion of your body weight, and so if it's off-center, if you're leaned way over here, it's gonna be a lot harder for you to rotate forwards because all of your weight is not around the center. Whereas if you try and stay more vertical, then it's a lot easier to rotate back and rotate forwards. So you, while you do wanna be tilted over your toes a little bit, from side to side, you wanna stay mostly vertical. So the third key is range of motion. Range of motion is how much your hips can rotate while you're in the stance that you're gonna be in while you're throwing. So you can try this if you'd like. Uh, it's incredibly common for people to take too big of an X step and then end up with their front foot pointing towards the target and their back foot pointing away from the target, their toes farther apart than their heels. If you just stand like this, it's really hard to rotate your hips very far. It feels like my knee is stopping, I don't really know, but it's just not very comfortable and it forces your weight back over your heels. So this is not good, but this is incredibly common for a lot of people. However, if you X-step and you keep your feet more sideways, not necessarily perfectly sideways, but more sideways, and then you turn your front foot a little bit away from the target by planting it on the ball of your foot, then you have so much more range of motion out of your hips. And you can feel it just standing here, you get a lot more power. It forces your weight forward over your toes, so you're pushing off of this back leg more, and it forces you to brace a little bit better too. So just changing your stance, I've heard this called a horse stance before, so it's kind of like you're a cowboy riding a horse, or I guess anybody who rides a horse, and I kind of like that, I don't know who came up with it, but I'm gonna keep using it. Horse stance is when your toes are farther apart, and you can even have your back foot turned like a little bit back, but as long as that front foot's in the right spot, you'll be able to have the range of motion. So try freezing on the tee pad next time, or maybe not like mid throw, but go slowly and freeze in your, your last stance as your last step, and see how much range of motion your hips have as you're standing there to see if you're even able to engage your hips in the throw. 
So one of my favorite ways to practice, one of my favorite drills to practice just footwork, just what's happening with your lower body, is to at least go through the motions of your throw while keeping your back heel off the ground. So if you, if you notice here, it kind of forces you to keep your weight over your toes and keep yourself aligned more sideways to the target. Because as we're doing our footwork, we're really just walking sideways forwards. <laughs> That doesn't make sense. Walking sideways towards the target. We don't want to be turning around backwards and then turning around forwards. So keeping your back heel off the ground prevents you from turning around backwards because if you do, then as soon as your body moves past your foot, your heel comes down, unless you do that. But this isn't natural, usually. Anyways, um, so going with your heel off the ground does that. It also forces your weight forward over your toes because if your weight's back, then your heel comes down. Um, and it really forces you to push off of your back leg into your brace. So just going through the motions of a throw without letting your back heel touch the ground is a really great drill for just figuring out what your footwork should be doing. So that's kind of what's supposed to be happening from your thigh down, but what does it feel like in your core? My favorite drill for this comes from Seabass22. He's got a lot of great drills. I'll link this one down in the description and he calls it the butt wipe drill. But if you don't like that, you can also call it the hip slide drill, but it's the same thing. Anyways, uh, the premise is you stand with your feet a little wider than shoulder width apart, just like you would in the last step of your, your throw. And your back foot should be a couple inches away from the wall. Your front foot should be a couple more than that. And then you lean back and put your rear end against the wall. And then as though you were throwing, do your back swing, so rotate away from the target. And what should happen is your back hip should slide forward. And then that, that kind of gives you the feel of pushing off of your back leg and notice your spine stays vertical and everything. That's what should be kind of happening as you backswing. And then as you rotate forward, your front hip should slide backwards. So your back hip goes forward, your front hip goes backwards. And that's kind of the feel. I think my feet are too far away from the wall. That's kind of the feel of that like churning motion that's supposed to be happening in your lower body. Remember, it's supposed to be powerful, not fast. So it's set up with your lower body, and then as you throw, you're taking the momentum off of, uh, from your lateral motion, from your, like your walk up, and the pushing from your back leg, and you're also pushing with your front leg, and those two forces are pushing in opposite directions, and that's what really drives the rotation. It's, it's a lot like what Lupko's talked about, what Jason talked about when you're, if you were a battering ram, you would really be leading with your weight in that situation just to really get that battering ram moving. And that's kind of the same concept. Your back leg pushes forward, your front leg pushes back, and that is what really cranks on your hips and provides that leverage. Notice it's connected to the ground. It's not just spinning your hips really fast. Your legs are straightening. They're becoming stronger. And that's what's driving the rotation and adding power to your throw. So that's why your hips can add so much power to the throw. But if your feet aren't oriented correctly or your weight isn't in the right position, they're just not going to be able to do that as effectively. Now, earlier I said that you want to always have one foot on the ground. You don't want to jump because that'll cause you to lean back. And it's something that a lot of disc golfers do. It's something that I've struggled with. And it's a real big problem as far as balance and everything uh, in the community of disc golf. So definitely don't jump while you throw. Now, if you remember the last video that I did, I talked about the off arm and then I showed a clip of Eric Oakley doing exactly what I said not to do. Here's that bit again. So yeah, I, I said not to jump and there Eric Oakley is clearly uh, jumping in that clip. So let me talk about that. The reason I said not to jump is because most of the time tilts you away from the target and leans you back. But Eric is staying vertical. So what Eric is doing is called a Brinster hop. And it was popularized by Steve Brinster. And so what that does is most of the time, in like a normal backhand, we use lateral motion along with pushing with our legs to create the forces uh, to add to that twisting motion, add to the force that twists our hips as we throw. So what you can use instead of that lateral motion is vertical motion, or I guess in addition to, because he's still moving sideways a little bit. But what happens is as he's coming down, he's basically pushing both of his feet into the ground. And so the ground is pushing back and that is adding to the normal push that he's doing with his legs. And that's adding a little bit more torque to his hips. Now this requires pretty good timing and balance. You notice he's not leaning at all side to side because if you lean back a little bit while you're doing this, your back foot hits first and then your front foot still goes down and you end up with your feet too far apart. And then 
your hips can't really rotate and you've ruined the whole idea of your hips powering your shot. So it is really hard to do. I think most people should just keep one foot on the ground. I think it's a lot easier, but I mean, if you want to try to Brinster hop, go right ahead. Well, that is all I have for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for subscribing. We got a lot of subscribers last video, so I really appreciate it. This is, again, a more technical video. On the last technical video, I had some comments that really liked it and some comments that said I was rambling a little bit too much. And so I might make the next one a little bit easier to understand, so maybe a little bit shorter. Just let me know what you think down in the comments. Make sure to subscribe for more videos on how to become a better disc golfer. And always remember, slow is smooth and smooth is far.